In the Bering Sea, on the frozen edge of the Arctic Circle, sits the remote island of Itagran. Situated off Russia's easternmost point lies the Chukchi Peninsula. The island is just over eight miles long and three miles wide, with a mountainous interior. It's hidden under a thick blanket of snow and ice for most of the year. In 1976, researchers stumble across something out of the ordinary. As they approach the island from a distance, they see what looks like tall curved posts pointing high out of the snow. The landscape in the Arctic is normally pretty flat and barren, so it's highly unusual to see anything this tall. Once on the island, they discover something they have never seen before. Strange curved poles that seem to be planted in pairs. There's an eerie feeling to this island. It's like stepping into a place of great significance that's been undisturbed for centuries. Closer examination of the poles leads to a startling discovery. They're actually giant bones. The scattered remains once formed a long, broken avenue, roughly 1,800 feet in length. There seems to be some kind of special geometry to the site, which is quite rare in Siberia. There's nothing like it in the Arctic. What is this place? These bones are enormous. What animal could even be this big? There are examples of early humans using gigantic mammoth bones to build large structures that are somewhat similar to this. But none of the bones on Itigran Island appear to be ivory tusks. So it's highly unlikely these are mammoth bones. As researchers inspect the base of the structures, they uncover groupings of giant skulls Massive bones like this could only come from a whale. And upon closer inspection, it's revealed that these are the bones of a bowhead whale. The bowhead whale lives in the Arctic. It is considered the longest living mammal on Earth, with a lifespan of over 200 years. Its distinctive triangular head is an enormous skull designed to smash through sea ice up to two feet thick. The Itagran site is strewn with weathered remains of bowhead whale skulls and jawbones of up to 60 other whales. The 16-foot tall arches are made of over 34 jaws. The avenue follows a man-made gravel spit along the shore. Extending from the center of the alley, a stone path branches off for 50 yards towards rocks on the hillside. This is a truly remarkable sight. These bones just didn't wash up on shore. They've all been brought here, deliberately arranged, and planted into the ground. But why choose whale bones to build such a place? In the Arctic, wood is very scarce. So local people often used animal bones as building materials. So these could be the bones of beached whales. But to find this many seems unlikely. Experts believe whale hunting has been practiced in the Arctic for many centuries. This was the result of larger boats called umiaks being built, the use of stronger harpoons, and an Arctic culture of feeding a huge amount of people with just one kill. The whales can grow up to 65 feet and weigh 220,000 pounds. It would have been a highly valued harvest. The whalebone samples have been carbon dated to the 1600s, a time when Russian explorers began making contact with the indigenous Chukchi people who inhabit the peninsula. As they continue to investigate the ruins, researchers find several rings made of smaller stones. They look like rings used by the Inuit and Siberian peoples to anchor tent skins and the bone formation sticking out of the permafrost may have been substitutes for lumber, used as posts for small huts. But looking for further evidence of a settlement, such as house foundations and tools, the dig comes up empty-handed. It would appear that no community ever lived here. This site shows evidence 
of having been designed for a specific purpose, but it doesn't have any of the usual markers of a significant human presence. When researchers investigate a location at the end of a smaller avenue, they find something remarkable. 120 conical-shaped pits, up to six feet deep and walled by rocks. At the bottom of these strange pits, they discover layers of whale blubber and frozen meat. Permafrost stays at a near freezing temperature all year round. In the Arctic, food can be scarce, so preserving it underground is a great way to ensure that one has provisions throughout what could be a long and grueling winter. This find is highly unusual. It was able to contain tons of meat. It's a massive amount of storage in a place where no one actually lived. Could Whalebone Alley be more than just a place to store food? The largest of the whale bones weigh between 500 and 650 pounds. It would have taken a lot of people to carry or transport these bones to the area. Serious effort went into building this site. And that could suggest that it was a site of spiritual significance. Other locations around the world with strange geometric features, like Stonehenge, for instance, also have a tradition of being a gathering place for now long forgotten ceremonies. And they are places where people come from miles to feast. The discovery of the hidden meat pits leads researchers to believe that Whalebone Alley may have been built to honor the whales. Hunting a bowhead whale in a small group of umiaks powered only by paddles could be extremely dangerous. And the hunters who did it and provided for their communities were revered. But among high Arctic peoples, so were the whales. They believe the hunter and the hunted are spiritually connected. The Chukchi performed very specific rituals in order to prepare for and perform the hunt, and then afterwards to honor the whale that they caught. This included praying, singing, and feasting. We don't know for sure, but they may have brought the whale meat up through the archways and then stored them in the pits for later use. The whale bones used to build the site were believed to help the slaughtered whale's soul return to the sea, unharmed. But when they study the meat pits, researchers discover something unusual. Carbon dating reveals that they were created in the 1300s. This predates Whalebone Alley by 300 years. So the meat pits may have been there before Whalebone Alley. It could be that the people wanted to pay their respect to the whales and honor their importance to their lives. So maybe they built the site as a kind of shrine or temple. Maybe in the beginning, whales were plentiful, so they only needed storage pits. But if something changed about the hunt in the area, they may have felt they needed to find a way to talk to the whales to ensure a good harvest. When they compare samples of bowhead genetics over time with bones found across the Arctic, something strange comes up. Their genetic diversity has radically decreased over the last 500 years which includes the time that Whalebone Alley was created. This indicates their migration patterns could have been altered. But something called the Little Ice Age may have hindered this traditional migration, thereby shrinking the Chukchi's food supply. The Little Ice Age was a period of colder temperatures that gripped parts of the world from the 1300s to the 1800s, causing drought, crop failures, and famine. What this did to the bowhead whales was reduce their summer habitat, where mothers would bring their calves. If the surface ice was thicker, they could have had a hard time finding breathing holes and just stopped coming. So is it possible that Whalebone Alley was built to bring them back? They definitely stored meat there, but if the whales stopped coming, it's likely the site was abandoned for a better hunting ground. Over the years, Whalebone Alley stopped being used. But the site at Itagrand Island remains an ancient pathway to the spirit world, frozen in time. The 
Urals are a long and narrow mountain range that runs 1,550 miles south from the Arctic Ocean, deep into Russia. The southern Urals often experience brutal winters that can plunge inhabitants into a deep freeze for up to six months of the year. In the winter of 2013, over a million people are thrown into a state of emergency when out of nowhere, a massive explosion rocks the city of Chelyabinsk, Russia. Then, compelling dash cam footage is released that stuns the world. It shows an object speeding across the sky, glowing brighter than the sun. Locals discover a giant hole in the ice covering Lake Chibarkal. When they dive the lake, they find a huge metallic rock sunk in the bottom. It's over five feet long, three feet wide, and weighs an astounding 1,300 pounds. It's one of the largest meteor fragments ever recovered in modern history. Scientists studying the meteor discover its unique striations and ancient scars tell an epic tale. This meteor has been bouncing around the universe for over four billion years. Could this incident help shed light on one of the most mysterious meteoric events in modern history? In the year 1908 in central Siberia, farmers near the remote Tunguska River hear an intense crackling sound in the sky. They look up to see a bluish pipe-shaped object moving across the sky. A series of blasts that sound like cannon fire echoes across the landscape. Then a massive explosion blows the farmers off their feet, slamming them to the ground. What could have caused such a devastating concussion, as well as that fire in the sky? Since 2013, Researchers have discovered 17 deep holes in the Siberian permafrost they cannot explain. They don't know how they form. And because the area is so remote, they've never actually witnessed one forming in real time. Two thirds of Siberia is permafrost, and permafrost is a natural reservoir of methane. Could the Tunguska event be a rare geologic explosion? A phenomenon caused in part by massive methane buildups under the permafrost have resulted in explosions, leaving large craters pocketing the tundra. But no such methane explosion has ever been witnessed, nor have there been reports of any loud explosions in the area. It's not until 1927, 19 years after the explosion, that Russian mineralogist Leonid Kulik decides that someone needs to conduct an investigation. After interviewing locals, Kulik focuses on finding the epicenter. He climbs a ridge and observes toppled trees as far as the eye can see. The trees aren't bent over. They are snapped off by a very powerful force. This indicates that the blast must have come from a central location. The blowdown is so massive, he is unable to estimate just how much forest is destroyed. But when he arrives at the epicenter, he is mystified. There is no impact crater. The epicenter of the blast contains upright trees, but with their branches stripped and burnt. Kulik even drained some marshes, which he suspects might be impact craters made by smaller meteor fragments. But he finds nothing. Modern researchers now know that 80 million trees were flattened in a strange butterfly-like pattern. They estimate the explosion was roughly 40 times larger than the 2013 Chelyabinsk meteor. It leveled over 830 square miles of forest. Is there something else that could have destroyed a massive wilderness like this? 